Yes. Okay. Um, I'm Sharon Nicodem. I'm an artist who lives in Anchor Bay, and I work on visual art. Most of my art these days is collage-oriented, both analog and digital, which means original type of collage, which is cut and paste, and then I scan them into my computer and add more elements or clean up the pieces in my computer and print them digitally. Um, this show is a little bit different in, in the fact that I have all of the work printed on canvas because it is a modern uh, show with a kind of a spoof on sci-fi uh, fiction and uh, I'll just show you a few of the small pieces. This is one of my little favorites. This is uh, a vampire in space and this little vampire part cat and part something else um, is asking to come in and hopefully somebody will allow him in because he's so cute. You'll also see that I have cat themes on things. I, I actually have two cats, love them both, and they show up frequently. This also is a modern representation of uh, a city in the future and giraffes who take care of the last living tree on Earth. So that's where the giraffe comes in. Then these are all, um, again, space. We've got some pinups. I like to use females in my artwork, and I like to actually kind of take sexy pictures of women in their lingerie or pinups in this case and uh, put them in my work again to make it more humorous and not too serious so and here's another pinup uh, as a warrior uh, and she has a space gun this one i i love this little guy this is called dino land and we've got obviously a, a space creature here that looks like a dinosaur. Have you ever noticed that in sci-fi there's a strange mixture in, in sci-fi art, a strange mixture of the very, very old and the very futuristic. So dinosaurs play a big role in modern sci-fi artwork. Um, and these are some of my, uh, I have some dinosaur pictures here. So you've got this mix of early Earth or whatever planet this is just erupting and everything and the dinosaurs are in charge. Which leads us to this one here. This in one is uh, early Earth. And this is obviously a dinosaur and the robot. And they, the uh, solar system, some intelligent life in the solar system, has sent robots to the Earth periodically to, to uh, see where we are in progress. <laughs> anyway, so this robot has been sent from outer space to check how Earth is evolving. And they, in this, in this case, they came during the age of the dinosaur. Um, and obviously, we're pretty primitive. And let's go here. Again, astronauts, the Earth, and this guy, who's wearing a NASA spacesuit, but obviously, maybe it's a Star Trek creature that they've met in outer space and is part of the, of the big uh, consortium and uh, wearing the suit and I'm going to cross over here. Just a few more pieces. This one just truly for fun because I like cats and this little moon is, is the cat toy and the earth is spinning and the little cat is having fun. Favorite. Because
because I do like cats. And it's a little red cat and uh, this little boy. And it's my best friend. And obviously, that's uh, the sweetest part. And they're, they're uh, levitating over the earth. More creatures. This is an invasion, the one below here, with uh, manta ray-like spaceships and a spaceman. Uh, this one is cats and dogs in space, and you can see they have a colony. So they're the first ones there. Maybe the dark side of the moon, even. So that's, that's my story. Thanks. Uh, I hope you like it. Thanks a lot, Sharon. <laughs> it's very good. Thank you. I've turned into ornamental art forms. So this piece right here is called an orrery. And it shows, in this, in this case, it shows a central sphere and other planets. Um, it's called an orrery because the Duke of Orrery uh, commissioned this to be built in about 1550 AD, and um, and that's all it's been known by ever since. Is an orrery. Some people will, will recognize something similar similar to this when they were in grade school, and it have a, a, the sun in the middle and a, little, and a little crank, and the planets would move around. So this is. Uh, uh, my version, normal male version of an orrery. This is um, an ornamental version of the first star pointer. Again, we're going back to the 1500s. And a uh, pure version has the earth in the middle. Other versions of it have the sun in the middle. And if you, if you remember the Copernicus spent his dying days in jail because the controversy was, was the Earth the center of the solar system or the sun? So in this case, this has a, it's a nice piece of lapis. It's very Earth-like. And uh, so I have that in the middle. And uh, along with these instruments, when they developed them, they... The first ones were very uh, ornate uh, science and and and, uh, and uh, art went together um, hand in hand. But they started using them as teaching instruments. So the original awesome instruments, you know, were kept off to the side and close close to their chest because knowledge was power. Um, and then other units they would develop and use for teaching aids. So as I spin this around, you're going to see a wobble. And that would represent the wobble of the Earth. Every hundred years, the Earth completes a three degree wobble. It's called the precession. So that, that just demonstrates demonstrates one of the things that an arm armillary sphere does. And it also, it also showed, shows if this was the sun, it, the sun's path, this, this ring could either be on, on a real armillary sphere. There's many, many rings that have different functions. This one is like a horizon ring. Wherever you go, it's level with, you know, perpendicular to the axis that the Earth spins on. And then there would be another ring that would would mimic the path of the sun. So as the sun goes up farther <laughs> north, then it's winter in one part of the hemisphere and summer in the other half. So that just depicts the, the seasons, and along along this this ring would be the, the the zodiac, you know, divided into twelve sections. Mm -hmm. um, um, version of this at all 
but it's merely a representation in my mind of the fact that there's more out there than you can possibly even think of. So we think of the universe as being boundless. Well, at the end of one universe, there's just another universe. So this is this shows kind of a, kind of a cutaway, like it's a molecule. And if you put the other half on it, it would just become a molecule and part of something much, much bigger. I think this may have been the last piece I built, or the other one was. This is a departure from what I normally do. This really, it may look similar in appearance because it has rings, but it's just ornamental. It's just purely ornamental. You can, all my pieces move, um, you know, or you can you can change the way that they, they look, kind of. Um, and I, I, I try to incorporate some unique features, like this whole thing is, is basically just mounted on this one piece right here. That's about it. Great, great. Thanks a lot, Mark. Okay. Yeah. Start again by saying that um, we collect a lot of stuff. We like old stuff. And the stuff that I use in my art is ephemera, which by definition means that it gets thrown away. So all these cards are old antique cards. They're from the 1870s to the early 1920s was the last, when the last cards were made. And what I've done is just take old things, like an old comic book, old uh, textbook, um, again, just from all different books, you have old stamps. Oh, and this is throwaway stuff. And I put it together. Unlike Sharon, I don't really have a story. <laughs> In fact, the first time of collages I ever did when I started collaging about 20 years ago was I just had them untitled one, untitled two, untitled. I got to 100 and I stopped, changed something else and started up my numbers again. Um, because there are so many stories in it for me and I want someone else to make up their own story for it. And these are little small, I work very small. My stuff is pretty intimate like this, so want to make up their own story or maybe it's just a feeling for what it is and speaking of that is something new <laughs> this also is um, something of mine that i really enjoy doing so it takes a bit more concentration than working with cabinet cards um, this is from an old Victorian album book in fact this is probably where a, a cabinet card would fit into I took a page out of the old albums and then I took little lines, sentences, a couple sentences and made a story out of it. It's pretty surreal. It's kind of goofy. They're a lot of fun. I wouldn't have to be like all. So, enjoy. So Sharon had her stories. Well, these are my stories. They're called collage tales. And they're all from different books, all from antique books. And they're all a sentence or two put together. It's like how they did poets did uh, found poetry. It's this is like a found tale. I call them collage tales. And then I sew them onto the papers, and to make them stronger, I'll back it off another piece of paper. Um, this is a collage, and I might have mentioned before, but this is from a Victorian scrapbook that probably held one of these cabinet cards in, it, uh, in a family album. So the, the difference, Sharon and I are really good friends. The difference is Sharon's is digital. Mine is all original, old material. So anything of mine that you get, you're getting a piece of history. You're getting an antique with it. Not all my papers are antique, but they're mostly vintage and antique, and I've been primarily working in that media for huh, you know, over 15 years. It's very enjoyable for me to be able to use my collection and make art at the same time. Okay, done, done. Thank you.